Yes, I hear you're the one that I'm supposed to see about a car loan. I will lend you $8,000. Yes. And um, what are the terms of this car loan? A rate of 6% for five years. And how would I, now that I know the terms, how would I figure out what my payments would be? And how much would the interest be? And how much will I pay back by the end of the loan? The upcoming video, it will explain all in great detail. Good kitty. I want to look at three different ways to examine the problem that was addressed in the beginning of the video. Um, first, we're going to consider simple interest. There's also compound interest, and there's interest that is continuously compound, compounded. So with simple interest, we have the equation I, or the formula, I equals PRT, where I is interest in dollars, either earned or spent, but in this case we're going to be talking about spent. Um, P is the principal amount that you start with in dollars. In this case, it's the amount that you borrowed. You didn't loan any money. Um, R is the annual percentage rate expressed as a decimal at which the money is loaned or borrowed, in this case, at which the money is borrowed. Um, and T is the time in years for which the money is borrowed. And uh, so let's look at the example. The example was we bought a car for $8,000 at an annual rate of 6%, and you borrowed the money for five years. What would you pay in interest, and how much would you have paid the total amount? We're going to call that A, and I want you to always remember A for this type of problem means total amount borrowed. And note that A is just the principal that you borrowed, plus the interest that you paid uh, on the amount that you borrowed. So I equals PRT, and once you know I, you can say that A equals P plus I. The principal amount that you borrowed is $8,000. The interest rate is 6%, converted to a decimal is 0 0.06. The time is five years. The interest would be calculated by saying, instead of I equals PRT, I equals $8,000 times 0 0.06 per year times five years. And you get that I, or the interest that you will have paid over those five years, totals $2,400. The total amount that you will have paid, including the amount that you borrowed, plus the amount of interest that you paid back, is A equals P plus I, or A equals $8,000 plus $2,400, or a, the total amount that you will have paid back over the life of the loan, is $10,400. This is how banks make their money. They lend you a certain amount of money, you pay them more back, you're happy because you got whatever you paid for, and they're happy because they made money on it. That's their job. The second type of interest, uh, I'm sorry, the second type of formula for calculating interest is called compound interest. And what that does is it takes simple interest. Let's say you are compounding it five times a year. You would, let's instead of five times a year, let's say 12 times a year. If you, are, if you are compounding interest 12 times a year, that means at the end of every month, you're gonna calculate simple interest. That interest is then added to the principal, making a new principal. That way, they're getting interest on their interest. And so it looks something like this. The formula for compound interest is the total amount equals principal times 1 plus R, which is the rate, the percentage rate, divided by N, which is the number of times compounded in one year. And, and before you multiply it by P, you're going to take what's inside the parentheses and raise it to the n times t power. Again, n is the number of times compounded in one year, and t is the time in years. So if we read it from left to right, the total amount that you will pay equals the principal times the quantity, 1 plus the rate divided by the number of times compounding raised to the power of the number of times compounding times the time in years. Um, now. If we read the same problem, but instead of having simple interest, we have it compounded monthly. That means 12 times a year. If you bought a car for $8,000, an annual rate of 6% compounded monthly, and you borrowed the money for five years, what would you pay in interest, and how much would you have paid total amount A, including principal and interest, over five years? 
We take the formula, a equals p plus 1 plus r over n raised to the nt power. The principal is $8,000. The rate is 0 0.06. The time is 5 years. n, the number of times compounded, or since we're compounding monthly, is 12. 8,000 times the quantity, 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 raised to the 12 times 5 power equals 8,000 times 1.005 raised to the 60th power gives you a total amount that you will have paid of 10,790. To find the principal, you just take the total amount. Sub I'm sorry, to find the interest, you take the total amount, subtract out the principal, and that'll give you the interest. We know that the total uh, that the principal was $8,000. We'll take $10,790, subtract $8,000, and come up with an interest total payments of 2790 If you compare that to simple interest, which just means compounded once a year, you come up with interest of $2,400. The more times you compound in one year, the greater the interest is going to be. With that being said, we're going to talk about continuously compounding interest. When you compound continuously, what you're doing is you're using a formula that takes the maximum that you can gain out of compounding your interest. Because if you m compound more and more and more and more times a year, you will reach a point where you're not gaining any more interest. It, it tops out at a certain amount. And the number of times, uh, I'll read what I wrote down, the number of times compounding at which the growth rate, or as, as the, the amount that the interest continues to grow, tops out. And that's called continuously compounding. And there's a formula, and it involves E. Remember E. Power is the natural log. And I said that I would tell you later how we could, how we could use E and logarithms in real life. Well, here's an example that's used all the time. The formula is A equals P times E to the RT. And I'll show you in class how we get from compounding uh, interest to compounding continuously. It's a, it's a long, drawn-out process, but I will take care of it in class. For now, except that A equals P times E to the RT is the formula to use to figure out the total amount that you'll pay back on a loan, including principal and interest, when compounding continuously. So, in our example, if we were compounding continuously, the problem would look like this. If you bought a car for $8,000, an annual rate of 6%, and it was compounded monthly. Oh, I'm back to the monthly, sorry. Um, that should say compounding continuously. Bear with me for one second. Sorry about that. I just had to make it a little edit. So, if you bought a car for $8,000 at an annual rate of 6% compounded continuously and you borrowed the money for five years, what would you pay in interest? How much would you have paid total? Uh, and that's, uh, again, the variable A, including principal and interest over the five years. Well, the principal is the same. The rate is the same. The time is the same. You simply substitute it into the formula, A equals P times E to the RT. And after you take out your calculator and you um, punch in the numbers and you perform the operations, you get that the total amount is $10,798.87, giving you a total interest payment over the five years of $2,798.87. The reason why there are three different types of compounding interest is simply that it's a way for who's ever lending money to make more money. Um, now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to try problems on page 322 and 330. Bear with me again one second. Sorry about that. I'm going to have you try on page 322 and 323, 1 to 32 all. Now, 
you'll have to do a little reading of the sections 4-7 in your book and that'll tell you um, some of the ways you can manipulate this formula. It's really common sense and you should be able to work through. You guys can work with partners, but I want you focused in getting this stuff done. Uh, I'll talk to you later. I've got to go rest a little bit and then I'm going to make a lesson for the following class. Be good for your sub. She's awesome. She can help you with this stuff, I think. Um, but if you have any questions that you want to email me, email me, hoffer.david at gmail.com. And if you have very specific questions, maybe I can make you a, a video that will personally address whatever your issues are. But I think if you try this stuff, you'll see that it's not that bad. Awesome. Have a great day. Math it up. Uh, you're already in the math room.